How's it going my Uber Scoot family and welcome back to another Uber Scoot video. Just a quick mention, now this video is pretty much made for my subscribers that have been asking me questions and also been asking me to remake my previous Uber Scoot videos. So I went ahead and did it in this video, also answer some of your questions. Pretty much just share with you everything that I know about electric scooters. So by the end of this video, hopefully you guys can stop harassing me with them questions. I'm only kidding guys, keep them questions coming and I would love to respond to you guys. I'm also going to be showing you how to maintain the scooter, just little quick maintenance that you need to do. And pretty much all the major things that you need to know when it comes to electric scooter. But enough with the talking, let's get started. Are you an Uber driver? <laughs> no, this is oh. the personal pickup. Oh, nice ride. <laughs> Thanks man. That would be awesome if they had it for Uber. <laughs> In this part of the video, we're gonna go through an understanding of the scooter and the power. You don't get tricked into buying a scooter that states it goes a certain kilometers, a certain speed, and then when you receive it, it's a whole different story. So hopefully this part of the video will prevent you from going into that lane. So let's get started. When comparing scooters, it is important to know, first of all, if you are comparing continuous or peak power. When someone advises that a 220 pound rider would likely need a 1000 watt motor, he or she usually means a 1000 watts of peak power as the amount of power that the scooter should be able to produce to drive the rider uphill. So to identify how much power your scooter is producing, this is a way of calculating it. So you'll take whatever voltage that the motor is and you will times it by the amps that the controller is given to the motor you don't worry about the battery just yet so the original controller of the 1600 watts 48 volts uber scoot is 30 amps so we're gonna times 48 volts by 30 amps so 48 times 30 we have 1440 so the actual wattage of this scooter is 1440 so this is the actual watts. This is not a 1600 watt scooter. This is a 1440 watts, roughly. I do have a different controller in there. That controller, it is stated at 38 amps. So let's calculate that 38 amps and see what's the difference. 48 times 38, it is 1824. So this is show you that I'm actually getting the full watts usage out of my scooter and more now don't get this number confused I just want you guys to understand something with the original is rated at 1440 now 1440 it would only hit that watts if it's going at full speed you know full throttle at you know at a hill don't consider speed with power and watts it's two separate things you know how fast it can spin and how strong it can spin is two separate things so going up on a hill, like a little little hill slope, going at full speed, this scooter will give me about 25, 27 miles per hour at a hill. And that will be using the full amps and wattage of the motor and controller, which that would be 1,824. So 1,824 watts will be used when I'm going up the hills. So if I'm going on a flat hill, it would only use half of the watts because the scooter is already spinning the momentum it doesn't need all that watts to keep going so you'll probably be going at 1000 watts and if i'm going down the hill i can probably go at 500 watts you know 400 watts and and i can be going at 30 miles per hour speed so the power of the motor the watts is used occasionally you know that that 1600 watts you're not using it as soon as you're starting the scooter you're turning you're getting 1600 no it works on how much the controller is telling the motor to push so if it's on a flat ground it doesn't need to go that much so it'll tell the controller use 800 watts get them going the majority of these motors when it, whatever watts they stated that is the company letting you guys know 
that that's what the continuous wattage is 1600 watts this can run at 1600 watts forever you know without overheating is what the company is claiming and so let's move on to this 1000 watt 36 volts remember we're going 12 volts down and the amp ampage on that it is a 28 amps so we're going to calculate 28 amps with 36 volts and see how much we get so come over here 36 times 28 it is 1008 so that scooter is producing the full watt wattage it is producing 1000 watts as you can see So if I'm going up the hill and I hit full throttle, the scooter will activate at 1000 watts. That doesn't mean I'm going to be going at 30 miles per hour. No, that just means that the waters can handle the weight, that, that the scooter can handle the weight. Like I was saying, the measurement of a scooter watt like 1600 watt is the rated watt of continuous run without overheating and breaking down. You know, a motor can be used with less voltage. Like you can take the 1600 watts, 48 volt, put in a 36 volt battery and you will get a 1000 watt out of it with no problem and it would run a lot longer. Same for going on voltage, like taking the 1600 watt, 48 volts and using a 60 volt battery or a 72 volt battery, it would also work. Most 48 volt motors can handle higher voltages. But if you use high power for extended periods of time, then you can risk overheating the motor. Also, your motor will try to spin twice as fast. And if your motor doesn't have enough torque to get it to the speed that it wants to go, you'll end up wasting a lot of power and potentially overheating and damaging the motor. That motor, as you guys can see, is stated at 1000 amp. Most likely that motor is the same as this 1600 watts motor. I don't see why it wouldn't be the same because there's literally no difference in them as far as sizing and and the look I would have to actually take them apart a look inside so I can take this 1648 volt plug it up in that 36 volt and it should be able to run with no problem you know to determine if yours will be able to do this you want to open up the controller and check if the capacitor inside is rated for 50 volts which is not good or it's 63 volts it should be fine depending on what you're upgrading now I don't want you guys to get confused because I haven't mentioned my battery AH is capacity and A or amps is current Now, to get power in watts, you need to multiply the current, which is amps, that the controller is pulling by the voltages of the battery. Those different AH batteries are just like different volume gas tanks. I like to calculate the amps as miles. If you do 48 volts, 20 amps, you'll get 20 miles, and that's at full speed. Now the reason why I'm saying AH because that's also pronounced AMP and when you're talking about AMPs for current it also pronounced AMP so that can get really confusing. I know that I got confused out of that so many times so I'm just trying to give you guys an understanding. Hopefully I've done that by this video.
this is all the maintenance that you need to do to maintain a scooter. Pretty much the only thing that you ever need to do is oil the chain. Now what I use is this superior lubricant which I got from Amazon. So where I do it, place it right here and then slowly turn the wheel while I'm pressing on it lightly. And also like to put a little bit right here on the motor's gear. So after I apply the oil, turn the scooter, give it a really nice fast turn so it can lubricate all the way around. And the other thing that you need to do it is the brakes. These are the only things you need to do is oil the chain and change your brakes. And also your tires, you're gonna need to replace your tires, but not not as often because I had this for, for about a year now and I ride it a lot. If I'm not riding it, someone else is riding it pretty much everywhere, all over. See the tires, it's pretty good. I can't change them if I want to, but I like it like this because I'm able to do more drifts with this, but it still has enough traction to keep me going and keep me safe. Now this indicator, there's two of them. One indicator is pretty much, think of it as a light. Whatever your scooter has anything to do with lights, that's what the indicator is, and you have two of them. There's one on the right side and one on the left side. One indicator comes with a set for your throttle as you guys know the throttle comes with three different harnesses the speed control one is for the turbo control and the other is for the battery control to indicate to let you know how many battery you have as you guys know right here this is the throttle so right here it says indication and right here it says throttle and right here it says stall now if you don't have this name I'm gonna give you the wires so you can get it understand it so it is gray and black for the stall the stall is for the turbo button to turn off and on the turbo and the indicator it is orange and black and that's for the light for the battery to show you if the battery is full half charged or dead and the throttle control which is red black and green to control the throttle for speed full speed half speed things like that so that's what that is that's for the throttle and next we have here on the left side of course these are your easiest connection you cannot get these confused these are your motor connection you have green yellow and blue these go for the motor and the other piece that goes for the motor it is the hull wire which allows you to send to control the motor to make it go forward faster so the throttle and the wire they work together so that's pretty simple you cannot put these in any different harnesses so you cannot mess this up so we'll put this to the side this is your controller wires this is your throttle wire and these right here that is left we're gonna go through the easier ones to remove them so you don't get confused now this controller came with this wire right here I have no idea what this wire is for I have never used it I have two separate uber scoot controllers and no other ones come with these so I have no idea what that's for. You don't need it, it doesn't plug up anywhere, so don't worry about that. And next we have <clears throat> is the power connection to the battery. This is the harness that you would connect to your battery. It's pretty simple, red and black. Can't get that confused, so we'll put that to the side. Next we have four different harnesses left. We'll save that for later. So here, this one, it is the orange and red. And this one states power lock. Power lock, it is for the throttle, the key throttle. This is what the power lock is for. This is what turns the scooter on and off. So that is what the power lock is. That's pretty simple. You can't mess that up too. But they all, all of these harnesses are the same double harnesses. So if you do plug it in to the wrong one, it'll 
definitely fry your wires and fry your controller. It's best safe to know what you're doing. So if you don't have them labeled like this, just remember I'm giving you the color codes. So for the power lock, you have red and orange. We'll put that to the side. And next but not least, of course you cannot mess this up. This is the only harness that is color coded red. And this is your charging cord. This is what goes into the side of the scooter right here to charge your, your scooter. You know, this, this thing right here has a plug that reaches right here and you will plug it up to this end so you can be able to charge your scooter. And here you have brakes, braking. So this braking right here, now don't get these confused, this white and orange and then there is a white and black. Now the white and black is for the lights for the brakes and the white and orange is for the actual brakes. So here's what I mean. So now we're gonna talk about this one right here. The white and orange, the one that says break in. All right, so the white and orange is for this break in right here. So whenever you're pressing the brake, let's say you're going at full speed and you, as soon as you press the brake, even if you're holding the throttle down, the brake will send a signal to the controller to cut off the power immediately. So that way it gives you a better chance to stop in and that way you don't drift, you know, and overdo it. Because sometimes if you're holding the throttle all the way down and pressing the brake, it might not be strong enough to, hold, to stop you, depending on the speed that you're going. So this is a really nice feature they have as soon as you press the brake, either on the left side or the right side, the scooter will cut off immediately. Now this is another feature that I don't have in my controller, hence why I can do this burnout right here. As you guys can see, the whole floor is burnt. The whole paint came out the floor. But if I had the original control, I would not be able to do that burnout. So you, you gain some and you lose some. I gained by doing a burnout. And I lost by losing the lights for the battery. I would like it, but it's not a big deal. Alright, so let's come back to here. So let's move these to the side. Where were we? Power lock and charger. Move them out the way. And we were at braking. Yes, so the braking was right here, which is... The white and orange and this what stops the power from the motor and cuts off the brake and the braking lights right here which is pretty simple and pretty easy but the brake light it's just right here this one right here this connection now all these brake lights and all these wires they go into here and this horn button and this light button and also this front headlight, they're all ran by the same wire, which is the last wire we have left, which is this one right here, this other indicator. So like I was mentioning before, this indicator, there are two of them on the original scooters. One is for the back light, the horn, the lights right here. All of those are controlled by this right here the indicator and the other indicator that I just mentioned to you guys that comes with the throttle earlier that controls this battery right here the light on this battery let's turn on this one so you can be able to see it so when you turn it on it'll tell you if you have full power empty or what so for, here's an example if I press the brake on this as you can see the brake comes on so if I press the brake and twist the throttle nothing so if you press in the brake and twist the motor doesn't work it doesn't send any power where you come to to this custom controller here you turn it on you press the brake the light is on see you press it the light is on it doesn't matter if you hold it all the way down you turn it, it's gonna go. So I'm holding the brake all the way down now and I'm spinning. See? This is the 44 tooth that I had changed. It gave me a five mile increase. Someone commented and asked me to redo the video. 
so here it is all right so here we have the 54 tooth now this is what came originally with the scooter and this is the chain that it came with so when I changed to this 44 tooth I tried to install it with this original chain it would not fit these right here these are racing tires they fit the same rim they just wider and they're a bit longer so if I tried I actually tried to install it with this particular gear right here with the 44 tooth it would not fit the tire kept rubbing on the motor on the inside it would not go in it would only work with the stock tire because it's a little bit smaller now if I wanted to use this tire I would have to go back to the original gear and chain that way tire moves back a little bit and it gets more room to spin without hitting the motor right there now always remember same way you remove the washers put them back the same way so there's a small washer and then a big washer and there is a spacer right there right in between there is a spacer on both sides there's your first one and here's your second one I like to keep them on each side that I took them off just in case and here's your bolt this comes with a skinny washer, make sure you put that back. To remove the tire from the chain, you want to push up as high as you can. The chain will loosen up, just remove it like so, pull the tire out. Now here is your gear, this is the 44 tooth, this is the one that I purchased. This is the fast tooth one. And here is the original gear that came with the scooter. All it is, take a hex key and remove this. Take it out. Place it with the same bolts that you removed. Now there's many ways for you to take the chain out. Probably saw from my other video where I tried to take it out from here. Which I actually succeeded. But putting it back in took a little bit of time. <laughs> actually the majority of the video putting the chain back in through this hole. I personally think the simpler, easiest way to do it, if you have the correct tools, is just to unbolt the shock right here, to remove this bolt right here. Then you could be able to remove the shock out the way. So you can get your hex key inside of here and remove this bolt. Actually, you don't necessarily need to remove the bolt, you just wanna loosen it. So you're just gonna loosen these two bolts right here, these two hex keys, which is gonna loosen them up. That way we can pull the motor back from here. Just pull it a little bit forward and we can have a little bit more room right here from the spark it and the scooter wall so we can be able to remove it much easier. So let's do that right now. Uh, to remove the shock, either way, either side you're removing it, I find it that it's easier to remove the bottom because the bolt is more accessible. Other than here, you have to get it right here, which is a lot harder. You need a flex tool, one of these flex wrenches or something like that. But what we're going to do is there's a bolt, this bolt right here on the other side. There's another bolt, so whenever we spin this, that bolt spins with it. So we have to get a, a socket, get a wrench to hold that bolt, and then we'll spin this one out. So we need a 16 millimeter. No, it's a 14 millimeter. As you can see it's a long bolt. If I didn't have this too, I would have been here all day. All right, so just like that, now we have access to here. You see, before we couldn't. Now we can access it. So we're gonna use our hex key and just loosen these bolts. This is what actually is holding the motor in place.
All right, so now we have both of these are loose. Come over here and just pull on this motor right here. There you go. All right, so now we have a lot of room. Pushed it in. Should be able to get it in and put it back. In. No problem. So, as you can see, just flick it up and it'll drop right out. This is the chain that I'm using on the 44 tooth. And this is the chain that came with the 54 tooth. Now, if you guys want to know how many links it is, that way, if you decide to get your own and you just want to know exactly how much it is and cut it that way, comparing it to your original, I have it lined up evenly, comparing it to your original, it has three extra links. As you can see, three extra full links. One, two, and three. Whereas here, see where it ends? Bottom where it ends. And as you guys can see right here, where it begins, they're both the same. So I'm gonna count out these links for you so you can get exact number if you want to adjust your own to get it to fit or if you want to buy it online and know how many links that you need to buy and here is the thing that I want to mention this is a master link this right here as you can see this is a different color than the original ones because the supplier that I purchased this from this is what they do they have a lot long chains and they have a professional chain breaker and whatever you're requesting They'll make a replica of that chain pretty much copy and just put a master link and get it to be perfect fit. All right, anyhow, I'm gonna count out these links for you guys so you can get a full idea. So here we have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 39, so there are 39 links in this smaller tooth gear, the one that fits my 44 tooth. So if you want to go ahead and buy this chain breaker and cut out your own chain or purchase separate chain, which is I recommend don't cut out your chain, that way you can have something that's working. I think they're only like $8, $10. So you need 39 links, okay? All right, so I'm gonna be putting the scooter back together now. So you want to push the motor back in after you put the chain on, of course. So put the chain back on, just want to loop it through this hole all the way down and just like that it's on. Now this is how the original video was supposed to be but I forgot to edit out the part that it took too long. Now I didn't edit out this part because we did it right. We have tools this time. Before we didn't have tools, but <laughs> you get the idea. Push the motor back in. Make sure they're nice and tight because these are the only two bolts that hold your motor. So but you don't want to over torque it. You don't want to strip the bolts, but you just want it to be nice and tight. And once you feel that fighting you, they're resistant, just stop. Don't overdo it. All right. All right, so before you put the tire on, you wanna make sure the chain gets looped inside behind the gear, just like that. Now make sure you put your spacers and don't forget about the spacers. They, they go right behind this walls. Each one has one on the left and on the right side. So you put your bolt in first, then your spacer. And I'm gonna lift up the tire and try to put it in from, the, from one side, from the left side. All right, so when you get that side in, everything else is pretty simple from now on. So. Spacer goes right back in, then you push the bolt inside, and then try to align it to this hole like that. See? Nice and easy. Just want to push in, get it from the bottom, and just roll it in. It's 
get it from the bottom and just roll it, it'll pop right in place. Big spacer. Small spacer. Now I like to tighten it by hand and then turn on the scooter and give it a couple of spins. That way the gear and the chain can adjust and align by itself before I tighten it so that way I don't get any off alignment. Let's give it a couple of spins. So it's nice and tight to its position. So it's gonna go ahead and tighten this up right here. Now before fully tighten it, you wanna make sure your chain it's just it's adjusted. Now this is how I like my chain, not too tight, not too loose. This is the best way you can get out of your scooter. So we're just gonna tie it up like that. So as you guys can see, we did all this for nothing because I forgot to put the bolt back in for the shocks. Nice. All right, so to install the brakes, if you flick at this bottom on the right or the left, they easily pop out but now there is a magnet holding it since you can see when I pull it out it goes right back in so you need to unscrew this right here all right to easily put the brake pads in what you want to do is you want to put it you want to start out on the left side where the bolt is if you put it on the right side it's going to be harder for you to put it on here so start off with the left so you can sink it in there and have more room to get the other one in. There we go. Now we have more room to put it on to put this side in. Try not to knock the other one out. There you go. Simple as that. Now it's highly recommended that you remove your brake rotors and place it in there so you can get that exact space that you need if you're trying to get this in and this is a little bit further out it won't fit in what you need to do is you need to tighten this up so just give it a couple of spins it's very loose so we can get the bolt in Right, so now we got it nice and tight. Tighten this back up. All right, so now we'll just tighten the bolts and we're all done. So I hope this video was much better than the previous one. Just one quick tip. If the scooter tends to get a lot bouncy and you want to get that comfortable ride, all you have to do is just tighten up these shocks right here. You just twist to the left and it will tighten up to get that stiff shocks. The stiffer they are, the less the bounce you get. Again, it depends on the weight. All right, and there you go. Now to the main section, which is the battery, which is what everyone wants to know about. As you guys know from my unboxing, I showed you guys that it comes with this cord right here. This is a charging cord. Let me be more specific. This is the charger right here. 
comes with your standard outlet this is a lithium charger as you can see it has fuses right there this is a 48 volt 5 amps you just plug it up in here like so and you plug the other cord in the wall and it'll charge just like that when it finish this indicator light right here when you plug it up right now let me show you guys you can see it's green right now because the screw is fully charged but when you plug it up and it's empty it's, it's, it'll, it'll show red when it's fully charged it shows green and it'll stop sending current to your scooter now a lot of people have been wondering about this battery they're saying do you need your BMS I believe that's what it's called you know the chip the computer that goes on each lithium system you don't need it it is built in inside it comes inside just want to come to this part right here a lot of you guys have been asking me how did I connect this battery to the scooter and to the controller things like that what did it use what do I need I don't want you guys to get confused with this yellow thing and this harness up here I just want you to imagine the battery just like this. This is how it came. With this cord, that cord, and that cord. And right here on the top, this was right here. This is what, what it had. It had this harness right here. Now this harness is the same thing as this right here, but just a different side. Or a different component, you know, a different scooter or a different bike. They'll use this harness. So it came with this particular harness. Now this doesn't fit with your standard over harness. You know, this is the female, this is the male. This goes in here to get power. Now it came with this right here. It was connected here. What I did was took some wire cutters and just cut the wires off, cut the harness off. So I unplugged it just so I can have free wires right here. And as you can see right here at this section, this is where I cut it off on the black cord. I still have it as is. What I did was I just took the negative wire and took a knife and stripped this wire right here took the wiring off so I can be access the wire and did the same thing for this harness adapter we'll get to that in a minute and stripped that wire and what I did was just twist it just like a normal regular nothing special just really not a safe way to do it. and just twisting them together as you can see that's why it's balled up right here and after it's twisted I twist it into a ball like this this is shrink wrap a lot of you guys have asked me what is shrink wrap this is shrink wrap is really cheap so basically all it is is tubing I have mixed right here so all it is it comes with different size tubing for different wires what you would do is find the closest one that would fit all right so how does the shrink wrap work like I said there's many different sizes you want to find you can buy this kit I'll put the link in the description you want to find the closest one to to your actual to your actual wire that can go in but not have a lot of roomage because the less room the less heat you need to apply and the better the tightness is going to be so as you can see right here it slides in nice and, and simple so you slide it all the way down then you do your connections See, you want to get it nice and tight in there just like so and then you just apply some heat all the way around I don't know if you guys can see on the camera but it's actually shrinking It will be actually safer and better if you apply a blow dryer, which won't, it won't actually burn the plastic. A blow dryer will be the best to work. Uh, after you let it cool down, you want to go again to get that really nice and tight secure. You want to apply heat on, on both sides and keep going back and forth. And there you go, just like that. This is how I connected the battery. Hopefully this was a helpful video. Hopefully you're not as confused as you guys were in the comments. Hopefully this will help. Now the more heat you apply, the harder this plastic gets, I would say. For this red wiring right here, I had it the same way as like this. And what that did was, they used to cause my wire to overheat and it used to melt 
my bubble wrap that I had over here and every time and the ride I can smell burning so what I did was I used one of these motor connectors this is the same connector that you would have that connects your motor wires to the controller those yellow green and blue wires this is a three set I took a old one a old broken one and took some of these right here these are wire pins with with rings on them and just put them on each of these wires and press down clamped it together this is a newer one this is what it looks like so I pretty much just put them in like so and as you can see these wire ones they don't fit in the hole right here so hence why I had to break this off now this gives it a better connection there's zero heat as you can see right here you can still see the old bubble wrap from when it used to overheat six seven months later no overheat at all but there's several ways that you can connect wires together you can look them up online there's these clamps right here these wire clamps easier ones guys so this is the end of the video i hope you all enjoyed this i hope i was helpful to you if so please leave a thumbs up but enough with the talking i appreciate you guys staying tuned and i will see you next time peace
your Uber driver? <laughs> no, this is oh. the personal pickup. Okay, yeah, nice ride. <laughs> Thanks, man. That would be awesome if they had it for Uber. <laughs>
You say what? You need to stop drinking before you kill yourself. Think about that. <laughs>